Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture of literature. I'm Adrian Ford. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here for, we are here for part one of a three-part, relong, four-part series as we tackle John Steinbeck's The Pearl. This video will be on chapters one and two from the text. Dalton, do you have a rundown? I do. Uh, before we get there, though, short text. Yeah. Uh, I have never heard of this story up until we decided to read it. We picked it up on a whim. And it, I thought that was unusual because it's a Steinbeck text. And I'm like, I thought I was fairly well read, but I didn't know anything about this ever being yeah. a thing. Uh, so a little apprehensive going into it. However, I think there's some good here so far. So, chapter one. Uh, we meet Kino and Wana. Do you, is that how I you're going so, with that? Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, they're living a nice, good, simple life uh, until their firstborn is stung by a scorpion. Uh, they take uh, Coyotito. I think so. I'm going with you. I need that acknowledgement to see. That's how I'm saying it. Am I close? Uh, so they take Coyotito to the Daddy, town doctor. Daddy, am I correct? And the doctor refuses to help because they can't afford the help. And yeah. That's fine. Uh, chapter two. Kino goes pearl diving uh, to help fund for Coyotito and finds the great pearl, which magically, for some reason, is going to make everything better. We all the fact that it's probably going to be worth a shitload of money. Yeah. Uh, it, for some reason, everything's better as soon as it's found. A little bit weird towards the end there. Yeah. Adrian. What'd you get from this? Um, I'm not sure where to start. Okay. Do you have any place exactly to start? Um. <laughs> I, I, I wonder where we're going. Um, you're in danger of losing your firstborn, but you just struck the lottery. Here's my issue with this, and I know I've already mentioned this to you. Like As soon as I got here, I'm like, oh, I'll let me tell you about everything I just read instead of just waiting for the camera, like I do every week. Uh, this concerns me because we have a child in a bad situation. We have an answer to the problem, but this is John Steinbeck. So I have a feeling this is not going to end well. All is not well. No. Um, you've got to, yeah. You've got to wonder if this is going to turn into... I have zero exposure to this text as well. And I have zero exposure to literature with this text, right? Yeah, I, I didn't know it was a thing. So you've got to wonder if this is going to be, these people are dirt poor. Yeah. You've got to wonder if this is going to be the trade-off between being dirt poor but happy to having money but no happiness. You've okay. got to wonder if that's the, the trade that's going to happen. Um, but you automatically have an adversary set up with the white doctor yep. who refuses to see you. So you have to believe that this pearl, this massive pearl that he's found, is more than enough to pay for anything that needs to be done with the child. So do they go to a market and sell the pearl for what it's worth, get the money, have the money to pay the doctor, and then you lose your adversary. Then okay. you don't have a big bad guy in the text, right? Um, you've got no antagonist, uh, just the protagonist struggling with newfound fortune. So I'm, I'm interested to see where we go here. Because if you take this, I don't think that if you take this pearl directly to the doctor and the doctor says, whoa, yeah, come here, fella, I'll fix your baby up. Okay. And the baby might die anyway. I don't think you have a novel there. Okay. From page 20. A little bit of highlighting because I thought this was good. Uh, Wana went to the water and waded in. She gathered some brown seaweed and made a flat, damp poultice out of, of it. And, she, and this she applied to the baby's swollen shoulder, which was good as a remedy as any and probably better than any doctor could have done. But the remedy lacked his authority because it was simple and didn't cost anything. So I like that. I, there's some good stuff going on with this here. However, I, I will agree with what you're looking at here, where we're going with this. A good idea of that. What we have here is a uh, very, very impoverished family, obviously, uh, living in, well, let's define it as an impoverished neighborhood. Uh, your neighbors live the same way, you do the same things. Now we have a man who has come into a lot of money. I think our issue is not going you to be... You want me to trade in my friend of 15 years for a G5 airplane? the hell and is that a from? a lot of money. What is that from? Tropic Thunder. I've never watched it that never enough to like... Thunder? I've seen it, but like not enough to quote it. That's uncomfortable. Well, he's... The movie's he's, not that good. Uh, he's talking about... They got taken hostage. 
and he and the producer doesn't want to go get him, but the agent does, and he says, "No, I'll just give you money. Yeah. Fuck your friend. I'll give you money." So I'm wondering. Yeah. I, I think that's what, what we're going to be looking at here. I, I think we are going to get the family who has found their answer, and their answer is finances. Uh, now that they have the finances, they can live the life that they dream. And how is that going to affect their roots and where they came from? It, it, I think we're getting into a money. But I don't. Story. I don't think you set that up with tragedy. If that's if that's the simple paradigm that you're attacking. So I think there's going to be some weightedness going uh, on here. I think it could be well done if the idea of money and the idea of this greater life and everything uh, basically just fogs them to the point where they're like, oh shit, the kid. Because if we're taking this to the market and we're going to make some money off of it so we can pay the doctor, we've got to get to the market we got to sell it. we got to haggle. we got to get the most we can. And now that we got the money, well, we can stop over here and get this taken care of because we've been needing this. We should do this. Okay. And the kid's going to be fine because he's looking better. We suck most of the venom out. We'll get him to the doctor. Uh, that's, I, I think that's the way we're going to go. It's going to be a very simple money corrupt story. Uh, and I, I think it is. That sounds like a parable. And it sounds too simplistic for Steinbeck. You think so? I think. I know that this is a, what, a 90-page text, something like that? Okay. So maybe, um, but it, that sound, from what I know about Steinbeck, that sounds too simplistic for him. Okay. Now, he, he does write with moral values at play, but I don't know if that's going to be what, what's going on there. What do you... Oh, go on. Oh, um... That's all I got for that, but was there something pressing that you were going to talk about? You said parable, and I swear to Christ, if this story is a parable, perhaps everyone takes his own meaning from it and reads his own life into it from the beginning of the text. Sure, yeah, that's that's right there. So, I, I, it just it struck me when you said that, I'm like, oh, I heard it was referenced as a parable at one point. Where the hell did I read that? <laughs> I hope it was in the right beginning of the text. Yeah. Uh, well, so, I, I don't know, it does seem very simple for Steinbeck, it does. Uh, but then again, we try to consider ourselves decently well-read. Maybe that's why we haven't heard about it. Maybe this is not one of his, uh, one of the greats, because it was just a little too simple. Yeah. Um, I, I hate to see it go that way, but I have a feeling that might be the case. And we have perhaps reason to fear the brutal honesty and simplicity of the text, because we get this on page 9. This coming as they see the scorpion about to mm -hmm. pounce on their child. Kino's hand leaped to catch it, but it fell past his fingers, fell on the baby's shoulder, landed, and struck. struck. Then snarling, Kino had it. Had it in his fingers, rubbing it to a paste in his hands. Then he threw it down and beat it into the earth, into the earth floor with his fist. And Coyotito screamed with pain in his box. But Kino beat and stamped the enemy until it was only a fragment and a moist paste in the dirt. His teeth were bared and the fury flared in his eyes and the song of the enemy roared in his ears. But Juana had the baby in her arms now. She found the puncture with redness starting from it already. She put her lips down over the puncture and sucked hard and spat and sucked again while Coyotito, Coyotito screamed. Kino hovered. He was helpless. He was in the way. The reason I say that that is troubling is that we have the big, strong, brutish man. Okay. Who is absolutely helpless when a child is around. Yeah, thinks he's doing everything right, but when he's actually needed most... Well, no, no, no. It's not that he... he so, you have no reason to believe that Wana was going to be the tough guy there, right? Okay, like she, 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 she's She's definitely tough in the text. We get that because... Um, Kino says that she rose like a strong man. Okay. But we absolutely see Kino take the the warrior stance that the man should take and spring upon the enemy and just snuff him out with his bare hands. But afterwards, when the baby's crying, well, I don't, I don't know anything about kids. Okay. You're going to have to do what you can, lady. Okay. Right? He was helpless. He was in the way. Okay. Uh, now, I will say about this, just the little bit that we've read so far, the first couple chapters, uh, it is Steinbeck. Damn, it's pretty. It, it can be, yeah. it, Sim it, Simple and pretty. It is simple and pretty. And, and the idea of not only simple and pretty text, but the idea of simplicity is very pretty in this. Uh, this the idea of having nothing but being very satisfied with nothing and being happy, uh, it, it, it's a 
beautiful concept. Those first opening pages where they're just, you know, waking up, enjoying the day, the same day that they've had every single day, they eat the same meal that they've had every single meal for breakfast. Uh, it, there's beauty to that. And, and it really kind of captures it. And it's, it's wonderful. And then you get the event. The, the scorpion stings the kid, uh, throws him into a bit of chaos, and then they're forced to leave their simplicity and they're forced to leave what they know best and the songs of their people to seek help from this modern world. Uh, it, it's pretty. There's a lot of good going for it. And even when they leave where they are, the entire community comes with them. Yeah, absolutely. And the entire community comes with them because they're worried. But once they're in the city, what do they pick up? They pick up stragglers who just want to see what goes on. Okay, yeah. You know, The community goes with them because they're worried. Everybody in the city is like, oh, what the hell's going on? Free show. Yeah. Okay, I, I give you that. Uh, so far, I, I, I could get behind this text. I, I think it has a lot of potential. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't know, it's the idea of you know, just living in a van, man. Just putting yourself <laughs> in the van and just going and living by nature's hand. Well, but it's pretty. We, we, so, like I say, I am not familiar with any of the, the literature about this text. I am, not, I am not up to date with any of the academic work that has been done here. But I dare say that I can predict from these first two chapters that there is a good deal of literature written about the racism inherent in this piece. Okay. Uh, we've got these simple people living off the land and what do they have but music. How often is that the, uh, the noble savage? Okay. Right? The noble savage has the music and the music is in him and he has the music, right? So I think that with all of the music that's being mentioned here, we're running in, we, we, have a real danger of running into something like like a deeply rooted racism in this text. Okay. Um, but knowing what I know from Steinbeck's writings, I don't know how to take that. You know, I, knowing what I know, I am ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. With Steinbeck, I mean, there could be a turn in this that is just gorgeous. And heartbreaking. And heartbreaking and wonderful. Uh, first published, 1947. Uh, so we'll see where we go with that. I, I'm kind of interested. Uh, we talked a little bit when we oh, did... Are you moving on from the music? I was. Would you like to talk about the music? Well, here's the thing. Um, they are very poor, right? Okay. Think of music scenes in the United States. From where do they come? If you think about the one big music scene in the United States, where is it? Is it Detroit? Is it? No. I would, okay, where is it? I don't know. The big music scene of the United States? I, I would feel it's rather spread. There's a lot of music coming out of Detroit. Okay. What is Detroit known for? Not having a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, so I think that it is... So what music is, is a voice. Okay, uh, that's a fair statement. Think about other art forms. Where do movie makers come from? They can come from anywhere. If you're playing the odds that a movie maker will be born today, where will it be from? West Coast. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Is there money in Los Angeles? A lot of money in Los Angeles. Well, I'll be. Okay. So there are different art forms that spring from different places, that spring from different exposures, right? How much does it cost to hear music? Pretty free, as far as I know. Been on the radio since radio was invented, right? Okay. Doesn't cost people listening to the radio anything. It costs money to see movies. Always has. Okay. Right? Nickelodeons. So I, I think that there is something to be said there. There's probably there is probably a socioeconomic stance to be taken on music playing a large part in someone's life. Okay. Um, so when you think about the most influential music in contemporary United States, what kind of music is that? What would you argue? I would argue it's rap. I, I was going to lean towards that, but yeah. I mean, I, I'm just being salty at this point because I'm not a huge fan of rap. But yeah, uh, there's a lot of influence behind it. Came out of nowhere, Came right? Came out of nowhere. Uh, you see a lot of artists uh, starting with nothing. And it is um, a distinctly American voice. It's an American voice. It gave them a voice, and through that voice they found their success. Right. Um, and it. So when you look back into the annals of rap, the annals of rap are not, I've got so much money. The beginnings of rap were, I will get so much money, right? There's been a great turn 
in many of the messages um, that you see through lyrics and that you see through you see through bars in rap. Um, that sounded that's bars is what you refer to the t an ironic twist in a rap line. Okay, sort of that's a bar in rap. Um, and all so when you look at it that way, it might take a little bit of money to play piano, right, or a guitar. Yeah. What does it take to sing? Nothing. What does it take to rap? Even less. Yeah. So I think that there's. Uh, that singing singing implies there's convention to it. You have to you know. Well, it at, doesn't have to be, but it's some like it's Freddie Mercury never took singing lessons. True, uh, but Freddie Mercury still I would I would say would follow conventions of singing. Right. His notes sound correctly. With rap, it's more of a spoken thing. Uh, the only limitation you have is just what you can what you can put into it. How fast you go? What bars can you turn? Mm -hmm. What rhythms can you follow? And even even then in in the rap scene, um, it. it Oftentimes, an artist will make his chops by riffing someone else's beat and putting his lyrics on it and saying, can I show up yeah. the, uh, the great of the day? Can I steal Nas's track and make the lyrics better? Because that's really a show. So I think that the whole... Again, I think there's a socioeconomic argument to be had. They're not just a racist argument. Okay. I would agree with you on that. It seems a very justified argument. Uh, now, when we were doing The Call of the Wild not very long ago, uh, we said it was very interesting because this uh, seemed to be the birth of a legend, the birth of a mythos. I, I feel like what we're reading into here feels very much uh, like a myth. Uh, the myth of, you know, the Great Pearl. And I believe that's very much justified from just that opening little bit... Uh, which I will not be able to find because I can't flip pages for shit right now. Uh, in the town, they tell the story of the Great Pearl, how it was found and how it was lost again. They tell of Kino, the fisherman, and his wife, Juana, and of the baby, Coyotito. And because, of the, and because the story has been told so often, it has taken root in every man's mind. You get that idea of this is a myth. This is the building of a myth. But interesting enough, there see, it, it feels to be a bit more than that. It is not just the story of the Great Pearl. It is not the myth of the Great Pearl. We're getting the build-up to it, the backstory behind the mythos, the building of the mythos, if you would, um, that I think is kind of similar to the Call of the Wild idea we have. This is our uh, glimpse into the creation of this myth, into uh, where this came from, and how, although I'm sure the Great Pearl is this big myth now, that's what this implies, this is the origin behind it, the origin story of the myth. So I think that's kind of an interesting little bit. It's kind of a rare take that you get into this and a rare read. Uh, so I, I, I'm excited to see where it goes and how it develops. I think it has a lot of potential. But yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, it moves so fast. It's very short. You're talking also not about the rise of a legendary person, but the legend of hope. Okay. The legend of chance. He's doing the same job as everyone else he works around. Okay. He just happens to strike the big one, right? So there is a difference there between... So Buck in The Call of the Wild was stolen from home. That's the inciting tragedy. The inciting tragedy here is that Coyotito was, bit, was stung by a scorpion. From there... Kino goes to work because he's just got to go to work. Buck takes the chance to fight for his life. Okay. Buck figures out he's really good at it. Kino stumbles upon a great fortune. Okay. So Buck, because he took the chance learned something about himself, and exploited it, and became a legendary person. The development of the myth. I am wondering what happens when the legend of hope and chance strike together, and they befall a man who is on his common work-a-day. What are you smiling about? I'm telling you, man, it's going south. 
Right. So because it was not skill or developed or harnessed, it's the lottery. It was stumbled upon. Kino won the lottery. Yeah. And let's watch how the lottery is going to fuck up Kino's life. Yeah. That's where we're going with this. And again, Steinbeck. I could be way wrong. There could be some glorious twist that makes this wonderful. But honestly, I think that's where we're going. You have no, a lot I, of I money. It's bad. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I'm a little torn. I, I think it has so much potential. I think it's just going to piss me off in the end. Uh, but I, I honestly think that's what we're looking at here is the uh, the base concept of money corrupts. Well, Dalty, we don't call you salty for nothing. That's what I do best. Yeah. I yell about things I don't know about. <laughs> And you're willing to tell on yourself, which is a new development, which means you will develop, you will progress into legend. Thus, you might say the mythos of Dalton (laughs) can be tracked through the videos of Strip Cover. The legend of Salty. You're very welcome for that. Do you have anything else to really say about uh, the Pearl Pearl Here, John Steinbeck novel? Because I honestly don't. It was a very short reading. I, I feel like we tackled what needed to be tackled. I will say, as apparently the apocalypse is going on outside and there are a thousand cop cars probably coming to my apartment, um, I am interested most in this text with the question of Juana. Okay. I am wondering what happens with Juana. Will she develop? Is she just sort of along for the ride? It doesn't seem like she's that character yet. No. But she seems like a very strong character, so it would be a shame to see her just along for the ride. But it certainly seems... When you, oh, close your eyes and think about Wana. What is she doing as we end the second chapter? We end the second chapter? Right. Where is she? She's standing on the back of the boat ready to go. She's going to make sure this gets taken care of. Very passively. Think so? She's sitting there and she's 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 um, tending to Coyotito, but she's not doing the work. And I wonder if she's going to become the nagging wife. No, 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 babe. The doctor can wait. We've got this money. That would be awful. Right? That's what worries me. I, I have the faith in Steinbeck that we don't go there. Okay. But that could be in the in in the in the cards. I will say there is a bit of a, uh, a little passage here on 17 that I think's got some oomph to it. Now, uh, the doctor lives in this huge fenced off uh, mansion, let's put it as a mansion, uh, and he has a, a servant who works at the mansion, his yeah. butler, however you want to call it. The doctor has gone out, he said. He was called to a serious case, and he shut the door quickly out of shame. Yeah. Mm. Shut the door quickly out of shame. That hmm. struck me too when I read it. You think so? Yeah, that, that's something as, as a writer you put that in the you put that in the arsenal. Okay. Yeah, no, I I've never I've never made the observation, but when someone else does, goddamn, it's true. Yep. You know. So I just again I, just the glory that is Steinbeck. It's well done so far. I have no complaints, but yeah. I I just I I just don't want to see it just tucker out the way I think it is going to. Right, and there's just so much psychology at play yeah already with these characters and with the minor characters and with the butler and with the stragglers in town call that man a butler if you will it's never justify he's a butler we don't even know who he is we just assume that because he's answering the door and you know he's doing the errands and and he's the same color as the town and he's folk. the same color of the town folk absolutely given that uh but for such a minor character who literally has maybe three bits of dialogue no name, no idea what he even is, we're just assuming, god damn that sticks with you. Well, there's, it's so good. What language is he speaking? Uh, he is speaking, uh, oh, it's not the old, how do they refer to it? Not, not, the, not the mother tongue or something? Like the old tongue or the old language or something yeah. like that. Uh, he's speaking English. He's speaking English. Which <sighs> sort of doesn't make sense. Because he's speaking English even though the doctor is French. You're looking for that one phrase? No, I just want to see how they refer to it. <laughs> it's going to piss me off. Yeah. All right. But we'll it get is, there. It is interesting. And so much characterization going into such minor characters, that's how you know you're in the hands of a master. The gate closed a little, and the servant refused to speak servant. in the old language. Yeah. There's a lot going on there, which yeah. is such a minor character. Anyway. We'll get back to this. Yeah. We've got two more chapters. Chapters three and four next week of John Steinbeck's The Pearl, correct in that? Yes. 
So if you want to join us along in this reading here of John Steinbeck's allegedly classic The Pearl, we'll see if we're going to get there. We'll give it that classic status. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and ring the little bell down below as well to get notifications from Strip Cover Lit every time we upload a new video here. Uh, we do this quite often, a lot of reviews. And if you would like to help us create more content like this here on Strip Cover Lit, make sure you follow our links to the Patreon in the description below, as well as the link to our Amazon shop. Get you a nice uh, Strip Cover Lit shirt. Wouldn't that be nice? They're comfy. Now let's yell at each other about the road. <laughs>